Do you love great podcasts? Do you love great Australian podcasts? Of course you do. Australians make incredible podcasts. And if you want to stay up to date with the best Australian shows, then check out Oz Podcasts. Look for us on social media and find your new favorite show from the Australian podcast directory on ozpodcast.com.au. That's O-Z-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, ozpodcast.com.au. Check it out. If you like new stuff before anybody else, if you like to keep your finger on the pulse, if you like the future and want to be in it, Keep on listening because we'll start in a minute. Uh, tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Uh, tech webcast. Because technology moves so fast. Tech webcast. Ha, stick around and you're gonna have a blast. Yeah. Tech, tech, tech. Tech webcast. Ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Let's go! Welcome to episode 325 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 28th of February, 2015. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday at midday, Melbourne time. Please rate us on iTunes and like us at facebook.com slash techwebcast and follow us on Twitter at techwebcast. Your hosts today are Belinda, Brad, Steve, Jacob, Jody, and myself, Jennifer. And we have a special guest today, Mr. Spencer Hanley from podclear.com. Hey, Brad. Hey, Jennifer. How are you? I am super. How are you doing uh, well, tonight? I'm super. Today, fan. rather. I'm, I'm fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad summer's over. Is it over for you now? Yes, it is. Is it officially uh, fall? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, good for you. Now, I'll, you know, I, I, I wish it were summer here. It's, it's quite cold. Yeah, I so. see that in the photos, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how's the week been, Jennifer? It's been pretty busy. It's been good. We um, have uh, had a lot going on at work. I got a new phone. What oh, else nice. is new, right? Good stuff. I got the I got the Nexus Six, and I'm loving it. How do you it's like really it? Nice. Love it. Love it. It's it's phenomenal. So I, I'm stuff. really happy with it. Yeah. All right, we got uh, Jacob back on. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Brad. And uh, how's your week been, mate? That's been pretty good. What do you mean? I'm saying Jennifer. Cold. Cold, yes. Indeed, it would be cold over there. Anything happened during the week? Uh, nothing really. Okay, same old, eh? <clears throat> yeah, same old stuff, different day. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Blinda, welcome back. Blinda, you're filling in for Andrew. Welcome. Is she not going? She must be muted. You there, Blinda? Oh, I think she's muted. Hi, right, sorry, I had it muted. Um, uh, yeah, my week's <laughs> been fantastic. It's been quite busy. What have you been um, up to during the week, Blinda? You, you, you um, well, I've, been, I've been waiting to get my Foxtel broadband on and they finally got it done on Thursday night. So Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot faster than the previous one I had, so it's mm. pretty good. But, um, yeah, wasn't very happy with the time they took. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, the time, yeah, the time, yeah. Uh, a little bit, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, what can you do? Yeah, true. What can you do? Um, and how do you like the Foxhill Hub and stuff? What do you like about it? It's good, good modem. Yeah, right, yeah, right it's on. much, much smaller than the and lighter than the previous one that I had, and probably because it's Netgear. The pre- the other one I had with IINet wasn't Netgear, so right, wasn't as good. Okay, and how yeah. are you finding streaming stuff and watching shows and that sort of thing? Yeah, it's a lot better. It doesn't freeze or anything like that. So. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, Enjoy it. Awesome. All right, we've got Jody back on. Welcome, Jody. Hey, hi, Brad. How are you? I'm good. How are you going? I am doing awesome. It's very, very cold here on the east coast of the United States. Um, but we're having a lot of fun, and um, fortunately, it'll be spring soon, so okay. we're looking forward to that. That's tomorrow. <laughs> no, not tomorrow here. We still have some time. Oh, that's right, because I'm in the future, aren't I? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> But we love you for that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> um, what else? Steve. Welcome, Steve. Hey, how you doing, Brad? Um, Wait, hey, mate. It's been pretty good. Just a little bit busy. Uh, I finally got the insurance thing settled so I can get my house fixed. So I'm excited. Uh, I hate working with insurance company. Well, USAA has been phenomenal to work with. It was just the other one was terrible. 
Uh, but uh, I'm looking to get f- this thing started, and my f- my fence been knocked down for I don't know how long now. Oh, still not fixed. Uh, yeah, because the, there's a insurance company giving us really big hassle, so we actually had to talk to a lawyer there for a while. Well, that's not good. Nope, but it's it's fixed, like it's, so we're good to go. So it's all fixed. <clears throat> well, it's going to be at least you know the money thing <laughs> is fixed. So we, yeah. that's good. So March and I see there's going to be an Apple event. Oh yeah, the uh, was that back to spring or something? I can't remember the exact. Back to spring. I don't know. I have okay. to say, I love the wallpaper. Hmm. Maybe they'll have it available for download. <laughs> Who I've knows? Got, I've got it on my Mac. I've got all of them. If you want, if you want, I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah, I, I could probably get it from my side, but you know, just check it. It's on uh, iMore.com. Oh, okay. That's where I got it. Hmm, interesting. And, um, what's your predictions for the event, Steve? Um, uh, of course, I think the the biggest thing I, I'm guessing is going to be the iWatch. There might be a few miscellaneous things they may talk about. Apple Pay? Uh, possibly, yeah. For Australia, which is good. How about the Apple Cart? No, it's probably going to be several years. <laughs> um, yeah, it should be good. It should be good. Um, Jody, what about you? What's your view on the Apple event coming up? What's your prediction for the for the, for the event? <clears throat> I cannot wait for the iWatch. I mean, I'm sorry, watch. I can't wait for the watch. The watch, yeah. Yep, yep. I don't think there's going to be anything um, major with regard to phones. I mean, Jennifer would be really the expert on that, but. Um, uh, I think we're due for an Apple TV upgrade. Yeah, definitely. Definitely Apple TV. Yep. Ooh, that's a good one. I can't wait for that. That's happy. Yeah. Love the Apple TV. What do you think about the um, the uh, MacBooks and, and things like that? You that think may, there's going to be? And get an update too, maybe. Um, but I've, iPads? Yeah, iPad. Oh, that, that may happen during the year. Probably in, I don't see them doing anything with iPad. Maybe no. a, a MacBook. Yeah, MacBook. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But uh, definitely Apple TV. Yeah, for sure. Hope so. Yeah, and I'm thinking the Apple Watch for sure. We'll see the Apple Watch, and then we'll do. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to re- release the new photos. You know, I've been testing out the new photos app. Oh yes. And right, yeah. yeah, so I'm curious if they'll actually um, finally launch that. They they definitely need to do something with their photo management. That's for sure. Mm. So. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Belinda? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them bring out the watch. Mm-hmm. see how functional it actually is and whether it's bulky or anything like that. But from what I've seen, it looks pretty good. So Yeah. And how you can sync it. I'm assuming you'll be able to sync it with everything. So Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Um, we've got Spencer on. Welcome, Spencer, from PodClear. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Good stuff, mate. What's your view on the uh, Apple event coming up soon? I um, think it's going to be great. Looking forward to the watch. Going to try it out. I think, um, you know, the first time that Apple releases a product, uh, usually it's it's pretty decent, but it always gets a lot better. So I might hold off on buying the iWatch until the next version, but yep. uh, I'm excited to see what it looks like and test it out with my friends. Yeah, cool, man. So you, are you an Apple user? Do you have an iPhone and an iPad? That's what I Of course. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, okay, let's go to the news and uh, we'll be back in back soon. Let's play this. And here we are with the Tech Webcast News. Mac Rumors reports that Apple is to live stream Spring Forward, the Apple iWatch event on March 9th. Apple today updated its website to notify users that it plans to live stream its Monday, March 9th media event that will take place at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco. The event will be broadcast on Apple's live website, and it will also be available on the Apple TV via a dedicated channel. Mac Rumors will be giving live coverage of the event as well. And um, what's really kind of cool is that they're going to be announcing the, the watch, not the iWatch, but just the watch, which I am definitely going to be in line to, to get one of the first ones. Belinda, we have more news. Yes, Spotify is launching a desktop update today with new features and improvements. They're making lyrics a seamless part of the Spotify experience on the desktop. It's powered by Music's Match, the world's largest lyrics catalogue, and it has the abil- you have the ability to sing along with your favourite tunes and just click away. You just have to fire up the desktop app and hit the new lyrics button. 
You can also search and browse popular lyrics from Spotify's top songs using the Explore feature. Very cool. Yeah, well, you know, yeah that's great. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a sad day for Aereo. That was that um, broadcast platform. Um, it was a streaming television startup, and unfortunately, they went bankrupt. And it's been sold off for parts in a bankruptcy auction, with TiVo getting control of the company's trademark and customer list. In total, the auction netted less than $2 million, according to Aereo. And the company had been funded to the tune of almost $100 million. Very disappointed, obviously, with the results. So it's a sad day, and um, we're sorry to see Aereo go. What else do we have, Belinda? And, yes, we've got the FCC has passed the strongest net neutrality rules in America's history. The open Internet finally got the protection it deserves from profit-hungry cable companies. The FCC just approved the strongest set of net neutral rules in this country's history, punctuating a years-long battle for this future of the internet. It's an historic day for the internet, the Federal Communications Commission just passed. The new rules largely resemble the open internet rules that Obama laid out three months ago. They forbid paid privatization, uh, prioritization rather, the practice that, is, that enables cable companies to create internet fast lanes as well as trottling. The new rules do not allow internet service providers to block websites and give the FCC authority to intervene when big cable companies don't act in the in the public interest. So this plan lets the FCC regulate the internet as a public utility, much like telephones. The plan does not give the government the power to set the price of internet service. And it's fantastic news, news that everyone has been waiting for. So that is fantastic. Quite interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and not everybody weighs in correct, you know, like on net neutrality, not everybody's in agreement with it. And I'm sure we'll discuss it when we, we talk about um, the stories. But, you know, what we've noticed is that Apple launched this iWork, and initially it was only available if you had an Apple device. Well, evidently, anybody can sign up for iWork without an Apple device, and that's for real this time. A couple of weeks ago, um, Apple's beta iCloud site was allowing anyone to sign up for the company's productivity suite on the web. No Apple device required. So if you tried to sign up via the standard iCloud site, you'd be presented with an error. Well, that's been fixed. No longer do you get that error. Anyone can sign up for access to pages, numbers, and keynotes. Um, and as with before, you simply need to follow the prompt to create an Apple ID if you don't already have one, follow the steps. And if you have an account but don't own an Apple device, you'll be prompted to verify your account. So pretty cool news for everybody who doesn't have an Apple. I don't know who that would be, but <laughs> poor souls. What about yeah. Microsoft? Uh, yes, Microsoft has updated its Windows App Studio with a variety of new features. The Windows App Studio is a web-based system which allows anyone to easily access creative or create apps for both Windows and Windows Phone regardless of the user's program expertise. It is handy especially for aspiring programmers who have limited knowledge of coding, hobbyists looking to build apps in a short amount of time, and casual users simply looking to build personalized apps to suit their needs. Today, Microsoft has updated the popular tool with a plethora of improvements and new features. One of these features is the much-needed logo and image wizard, which makes it possible to upload JPEG and PNG image files to be automatically loaded to the app's necessary icons, tiles, and splash screens. Another addition to the same feature now allows users to crop and zoom images. But Facebook and YouTube connectors have also been updated to use the latest APIs. This allows users to add a wider range of display types for each data source. So that sounds quite good for PC users. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> and if you're a Mac user um, or yeah. an iOS user, you know, every time they introduce a new device, what comes next? A new iOS. So iOS 8.2 could see public release next week. Two more betas of iOS 8.3 are to come. Apple may be planning to release iOS 8.2 to the public as early as next Monday. Um, 
It's been in testing since November, notably contains support for the Apple Watch. The March release date has not been um, has been rumored for several weeks now. Earlier information pointed towards the launch of a bit later in the month, possibly during the second week of March. But um, it looks like a Monday, March 2 release date for iOS 8.2. That would mean the software would be released to consumers a full week ahead of Apple's scheduled March 9th Spring Forward Media event, where the company is expected to divulge additional details on the Apple Watch. So, so far, um, there have been five iOS 8.2 betas, um, with the last beta coming on Monday, February 2nd, suggesting either another beta or a public release is coming in the near future. Uh, another upgrade to our iOS operating system, and that's the news. That is fantastic. That's, that, is, that, is, that is a fantastic. Thanks to Belinda and uh, Jody for doing the news. Yay, us. Good stuff. Yay, yay. Good job, Belinda. Yay. Let's, go to, um, let's go to Spencer first. Spencer, what's your view on them stories, mate? He's, he's speechless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, I was muted. Did, did you ask me? Huh? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> sorry, the, the Skype connection Try cut to stay out awake. a little bit. What was your question? <laughs> oh, no, I'm here. <laughs> um, let's go to Steve. Steve, what's your view? <laughs> hey, we're going to have to tell once we get this pod clear uploaded to the server. But anyway, um, trying to give you a free plug there early on. Um, there's yeah. actually a couple of uh, articles I'm interested in, and that's... Um, the FCC net neutrality, um, it could be, I don't know, I'm still undecided about this. I know my brother hates it for various reasons. I could see it being both good and bad. Primarily, um, it will prevent um, internet service providers from uh, charging extra for people like Netflix, which tend to pass down the extra pricing down to their customers. Now, uh, Besides that, I'm not sure I'd really have to study it a long, a very long time and hard to understand all the rules and, and how they apply. But um, I, I, this is something I theorized as, as well, that the Internet's going to become so important that the uh, eventually the government will intercede, uh, such as making it a public utility, um, just so people will have access to it. Of course, it could be a bad thing. We'll see in the future. And uh, Aereo... Uh, in some ways, uh, it's not surprising. Um, first, I think the uh, Supreme Court or one of those courts ruled that um, they, it's per, it's illegal to do so for them to um, download it through the aerial and then rebroadcast it. Uh, now that they ruled against it, uh, they're pretty much out of business. I uh, hate to see startups do that, but then again, of course, if there's something controversial such as this, um, it could uh, very easily end this way. All right. Good stuff, Steve. Um, Jacob, what about you, mate? What's your view on them stories? Uh, I like that. I like that Ariel got bought out by TiVo, mostly. Yeah. What do you think TiVo will do with it? I do not know right now because I didn't know much of the company. I don't know much about them at all. You know, I didn't. Um, but yeah. Should be good. There's also a sad note that we found out today mm. that mm. Larry Nimoy Spock passed away at E3. Yeah, that's very sad. He's he really left his presence. You know, I mean, I think I, I don't know a person that didn't love uh, Doctor Spock, right? So um, we all love Spock and. Mr. Spock. Mm. Mr. Spock, thank yeah. you. Not that I say Dr. Spock. I, I, I don't know where the heck I got it. must be talking about bones. I'm a Jim. I'm a doctor. I get them so um, confused. I, I have no idea. I got my characters mixed up there for a second. No, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, he's just. I, I, never, I never knew for him to be in anything else, though, really, except for the Star Trek films and the Star Trek series. Um, I, I'm definitely sure. definitely iconic. He was iconic. Yeah, he was. and. Yeah. You know, he created this role that we all could kind of relate to. Like, you know, he's kind of nerdy and yet, you know, unemotional. And yet you kind of felt sorry for him, mm -hmm. you know, for, for Spock. He'll be missed. Uh, but, you know, it, it's still kind of like he's here anyway. I don't, you know what I mean? Like he's gone, but he's still here. Yeah, he left his, he left his presence behind. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. His legacy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Live long um, and prosper. Let's go. Live long to, and prosper. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Blinda. Blinda, what about you? Uh, yeah, I thought the uh, – which one was it? The Spotify um, update uh, Spotify, was good. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I like to sing along with songs while I'm listening yeah, definitely. to them on my headphones. And yeah, definitely. It would be good if the lyrics were actually there because sometimes you don't know what so the actual I, uh, lyrics are. And when I play Eminem, I can actually sing along then. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> Should be good. Uh, yeah. What else, Blin, any other views? Yeah, I thought it was interesting with the iWork on iCloud, how people can just use the stuff without any Apple devices. I thought that was a bit weird because – Usually when you've got an, an Apple ID, you've normally got an Apple device yeah, to yeah, with it. So I thought it was a bit strange that they're let, just letting everyone use it now. Yeah. Well, Jay, Jay's got a uh, Windows machine and he, is, he, he has an Apple ID and yeah. he can use it too. Yeah. I suppose they've got to share it around with yeah. everyone. Yeah. So, def- uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I just thought it was a bit odd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so. Fair enough. Anything else, Blinda, you want to mention? Um, I thought it was an interesting story that um, Labor at – the Labor Party in Australia are agreeing to the um, data retention laws where telecommunications companies can keep um, data for up to two years of, um, of their um, customers. Okay. Yeah, it's for um, security reasons. But they, they're not allowed to keep the co- any content. It's just like which websites you've been to and that sort of thing. So it's a whole counter-terrorism type thing so that they can – investigate people but i i think it's a bit much that they're they're just allowed to do it without a warrant or anything like that yeah they right. can just go in and look at your information and they're just forcing the telecommunications companies to provide that for two years and it's they reckon it's going to cost the um customers more money because the companies that the telcos are just going to be charged more from the government and then they're going to pass that on to the customers yeah right okay so yeah interesting what yeah, about the new uh, update story. coming, Melinda, with the iOS? What about the new iOS? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because I've got all Apple stuff. So Yeah. Yeah, it's always like good. Like the new uh, emoji and that sort of thing? Then yeah. Should be fun. Yeah, I saw one. Somebody put something on Twitter of an emoji that had a like someone flipping the bird. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jacob was just yeah. talking about that just before. He reckons he, yeah. he hopes, he, hopes someone will be adding that icon in. <laughs> Oh, I'll ha- be having a little bit of fun with that. <laughs> I'm sure you would be. Flipping everybody off. <laughs> All right, back to the show. <laughs> yes, and of course, the sad news about um, Mr. Spock yeah. from Star Trek. He was a fantastic actor, so he'll be missed. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Did you wa- watch some of the shows, Melinda? Or? Yeah, I watched some of them. He was... Star Trek. He was just yeah. like as soon as you saw him, you knew that it was Star Trek. So he yeah. sort of he, he was yeah. he was still the on a couple other things for too. Star Trek. Mm. What's that, Steve? Um, yeah, I mean, he was uh, he did some other things as well. Not just, of course, he's well known for Star Trek. I know he's done a, a few guest appearances on television shows. Um, I think maybe the Night Gallery or something like that. Uh, he was on some kind of. Um, in Search Of, that's the name of it. It's like a little mystery program in the 70s. Uh, and recently he was on Fringe as uh, Dr. Bell, I believe, the character he played on there. So uh, even though he's well known for that, he, he's done other projects too. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, Spencer, what about you, mate? What's your view on them stories? Yeah, it was interesting. I think the Arrow story is really fascinating. Um and it seems like they've been around for a long time, and I'm wondering what uh, what the reason was behind TiVo's acquisition of those assets. It seems like mm. they acquired a bunch of IP from them, and also like a ton of old hardware. Yeah, uh, yeah I remember seeing the story, and it seemed like a bunch of sort of almost useless stuff. I, I can see the only really valuable thing there was like the customer list, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about a, a company purchasing another another company's customer list. But um, yeah, it seems seems interesting. It sucks. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people devote thousands and thousands of hours of their lifetime to creating a company like that with the hopes of making it something impactful. And and it's a real shame when you see, uh, you know, a company go down like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure TV would uh, take care of it all. I'm sure they'll yeah. t- to uh, good use. I have something to say, Brad. Yeah, go ahead, Jacob. Well, if it's going to be on TV, well, the... Um the service price come up for um, the uh, no idea, mate. For the normal 
the the season subscribers are already subscribed. I'm not sure. Or, I'm not sure. or if it would come in as a feature on the box. Yeah, I think I think what they actually acquired was a bunch of the intellectual property. So they probably won't roll it out as features for the TiVo platform, but more so just sort of like own those patents so that no one yeah. else comes in and tries to eat their market. That's most likely the, the case. Yeah. Uh, Spencer, are you, a, are you a Spotify fan? I am, yeah. What's actually, my desktop version has been glitching out lately, so I haven't been able to use the desktop. I've been using the web version, but I'm looking okay. forward to this, uh, this uh, new release. Maybe it'll fix my... My bug. It hasn't been able to open for the last couple of weeks. Oh, well, you've been using it on the Mac, right? Yep. Uh-huh. Okay, interesting. I don't know why that's doing that. That should. Oh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but looking forward to the new release. It seems cool. Yeah, it sounds very cool. Yeah, yeah. Any other? You know, yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. Yep. I was just going to say, with the Spotify update, I don't see where this is an update. Mine was already showing the lyrics with Music Match, with the Music mm-hmm. Match plugin, you know? So, yeah, it, sometimes the they do A B version. testing. Sometimes oh. I'll do A-B testing on some of the users. Like you'll get a version with lyrics before they actually release it to the public and you won't really know oh. that you're like one, a, a quasi-beta user and they'll just oh, see, see if you use the thing. Uh, a lot of people won't have that feature rolled out. So it's sort of like, uh, yeah, they're just gaining statistics on ahead of time. Also, oh, I think yeah. that um, there's a lot of integrations that I remember reading about in the past that they could that they were thinking about doing. Like I know that um, Genius.com, uh, the sort of like lyrics, uh, I don't. They 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 do like lyric annotations, uh, and they're mm-hmm. it's crowdsourced. So like, if you have a favorite song, you and your friends can like go in and like annotate the lyrics on that uh, on that song, and they're shared publicly. So you can sort of like guess at what the artist was trying to get at in their lyrics. Uh, oh, cool. And if they integrated that feature, they have a really great API. If they if they integrated sort of that API feedback into Spotify, it could be really interesting. Like bring a more social component to the listening experience. I would like that. Yeah. yeah, it'd be really cool. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So hopefully it totally. can go in that direction. But. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about you, Jennifer? What's your view on them stories? Oh, gosh. The net neutrality one. So I, I'm kind of like Steve. I have mixed feelings on that one. Yeah, I never really like to see the government get control of our of our um, business. But uh, at the same time, it is a utility in my eyes and it is a needed utility that everyone needs access to. In addition, I do not appreciate Time Warner Cable monopolizing this area that I'm in right now with my cable bill being through the roof just for internet connectivity. And so I'm hoping that that gets under control. Uh, So I, you know, who knows what to expect? I'm going to hope for the the best and expect the best because I really don't have any other options, so I'll just keep a, a positive outlook on yeah, it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What do you pay for your cable bill, um, Jennifer? I pay ninety-five dollars a month for fifty megabits or megabits per second down and uh, five up. Is that good? No, it's bad. It's oh, very bad. Ninety is a bit high. Yeah, high. Dude, that is high. What it's about very you? expensive. What about yeah. you, Steve? How much do you uh, pay? I don't know. I got to really look at it again. I think um, I, I believe it's a bit cheaper. I believe it's like fifty dollars, maybe. Okay. For the same. Is that with TV? Is what about with TV and stuff? Bundled with TV, like oh, it, it's things? probably like a hundred and fifty. Well, I'm paying like two hundred and seventeen dollars for my internet and phone and and TV. So I don't do the TV and my phone. I use Uma. So yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I have to get the phone on because for the internet. So yeah, I can't not use it without the phone, um, yeah. which is I don't really use that much, but it's the phone, my iPhone more. Maybe it'll lead, lead yeah. to more competition and lower the, the, the I hope you know, so. the yeah. prices down, get some more inter- service internet it needs to providers. Be under control. It shouldn't, we should be able, we should have faster speeds for an affordable price. Furthermore, fiber should be everywhere. I mean, granted, it's going to take a while to roll it out, but, you know, I, when, when some areas have and others don't, that's, that's the thing with the, direct, the direction we need to go in. I mean, the internet is a utility and, and we need to have a, a a large pipe, I think, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, That's what happened in Australia. They were going to roll out fiber, but then the party that wanted it lost the election. So now oh. they just got, still got partly copper. So, yeah, it's we, slow. We have Google Fiber launching and like uh, right where I live, it's not where I'm coming. Where, where I, it's not coming here where I live rather, but it's uh, in Raleigh. It's coming to Raleigh and Charlotte. And Do you have it in San Francisco, Spencer? Does, did Google, Google Fiber go out that way? No, no. Surprisingly, yeah. no. The, the infrastructure is too old here. So it's, I mean, I suppose it would be the same on the East Coast, but they haven't actually built it into San Francisco. We have hmm. like monopolized Time Warner as well over here, which 
is a, is a real pain in the butt. Uh, I just I just terrible. thought of another thing that might also be helpful for like small businesses. It's like anytime you own a business or in a business building, you know, these um, service providers, they know that and they want to charge you, you know, three, four times as much for basically the same thing. So maybe that will help, right. you know, lower that cost down as well, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. What, a, so. what about you, Jody? What's your view on all this? How much do you pay for your internet a month? Is it very, uh, first of all, my, mine's bundled. So I have um, TV, phone, and internet, and I pay roughly 250 a month. Well, that's how much I pay for that. now. Yeah, 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 and it's not cheap. But, no, it's not cheap. You know, that, but. That's what you do. Um, with regard <laughs> to the stories, um, I know, right? With regard to the stories, um, the, the concept of giving away the Apple uh, proprietary um, pages, you know, the iWorks, um, I think it's important because I think what happens is it's a freemium kind of an application. So as people get sucked in, they're going to start liking that platform and it's easier to use, obviously, on an Apple device. So I think it's a smart marketing ploy by Apple. Um, and with regard to one other story, I cannot wait. I am going to be first in line to get an iWatch. I mean, a watch. Because I Apple think they're, they're totally cool. <laughs> Wh whatever they're going to call them. I, I think they're totally cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. Totally. I should change, yeah. They should change the name to iWatch. Is, is, isn't that already, yeah. is the name? No, iWatch? No, it's Apple yeah. Watch. The yeah. yeah. official name is Apple, Apple Watch. watch. Okay. So I think iWatch. Watch. So. I think I watch yeah. it's better. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think they're moving I, I away so, from dropping the I and going with, with Apple going But forward. I so want to be Dick Tracy. You know, I mean, like, I, I can so see, look, you know, like talking to, into my uh, my watch. Put them down. You know? <laughs> now, I, here. you need a shoe phone. They are, they are oh, helpful. I mean, I, I have two smart watches like, right now and I really love them, so. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Are you eating, eating, Jennifer, oh. what don't you have? I should. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, good, good point, Jody. <laughs> I'll tell you though, I'm using an LG G watch, and I also have a Samsung Gear S, and I really like the LG. I like Android Wear better than Tizen, or I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. So, I, um, I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Tizen, but uh, no Fitbit, I, huh? No Fitbit. No, I don't have a Fitbit. No, I do not have a Fitbit. <laughs> one thing she doesn't have. She has everything else, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to say, though, one, one other story that I'm kind of excited about is the, uh, the Windows app studio. And I would like to try my hand at Windows apps. I do have a Windows phone as well. So there you go. There's another phone, right? And, uh, it, and, I, and I actually enjoy it. I just put the Windows 10 uh, technical preview on my Windows phone. And it's it's really nice. It's 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 refreshing. So I would love to try this app studio and and just get my try my hand at uh, programming a little bit for Windows and see what that's like. Sounds good, Jennifer. Uh, Bl uh, Belinda, what about you? Are you getting the, the new watch when it comes out, or uh, depends what price it is because it'll probably come down in price after it's been out for a while. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, it depends whether I I don't know if I'd use it. So yeah, true. Because I've just got the traditional wristwatch on with the hands and everything. Yeah, so, true. Yeah. I'll probably go and look at it at, at the store first before I buy one. I don't want to rush yeah, it. Yeah, if it. it's really cool, I'll probably get it. Yeah. yeah. But do you face the stuff, do you reckon? Or? Yeah, it would be pretty cool being able to just put it up to your face and then talking to someone while you're walking. Well, that, that would. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know what I would do. I think I might have to get one, though, just because. Yeah, true. Work. And wear so my Android on one arm and my Apple Watch on the other. <laughs> you could talk to each watch. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, oh, you could go David Hasselhoff and what you, it. What about you, Spencer? Are you going to get one, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm considering it. I don't, I don't think I'll probably get the first iteration. I'll probably wait until the second. But uh, it's definitely an interesting product. There's tons of – I don't know if you guys saw the, the – the Fitbit came out as well. Or, I'm sorry, not the Fitbit, but the, uh, the new Pebble Watch. It just launched on oh, Kickstarter yeah. and raised like $10 million bucks in the first six hours or something like that mm -hmm. and uh that seems interesting as well it's a little bit more open source a little yep. bit more flexible uh it's the design isn't as nice but it seems like i don't know it seems like a, a cool device all right uh spencer's on uh today's show belinda so uh we're going to talk about PodClear, spencer yeah absolutely yeah thanks for having me on it's it's uh cool to be able to use PodClear to record this episode yeah, definitely mate tell us about PodClear and what does it do on that 
Yeah, so PodClear is a uh, mobile, it's a desktop application for recording uh, podcast interviews like this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's so traditionally podcast interviews for podcasters are recorded via uh, some sort of recording software like Ecamm, Call Recorder, or something like that. Uh, and basically what it does is it records the Skype call coming into your computer. Uh, PodClear changes that system. Uh, I guess the problem with that system is that the audio is highly compressed and the audio quality can be chopped up by Skype. Uh, and and it's it's just not it's not optimal. It doesn't. It sounds like we're in different rooms, right? We it's clear that we're all on a Skype call right now. Yeah. What PodClear does is it sort of fixes fixes that problem and makes it appear that we are all sort of in the same room. And it how it does that is it records independently on every side of the call. You can have unlimited participants in a call. It'll record independently on everyone's computer and sync the files after the call is complete. Uh, those files are merged uh, in our servers and then delivered to you as independent audio files for every participant as well as a mixed version of the entire call. Awesome. And the whole audio file is lossless, so you you really you really give the impression that everyone's sitting in the same room recording, especially if people are using nice microphones and, so, and all of that Skype artifacting is completely removed and uh, it's clean. Nice. So, so for example, if Skype was breaking up, um, PodClear will clean that up? We'll if that. Skype is yeah, if Skype is breaking up, then it won't affect PodClear at all because it's oh, wow. actually there's nothing being passed to the network uh, while the call is happening. So it's actually just literally recording to your hard drive. And once this, the call is over, it takes that like raw audio file and just uploads it. Uh, so there's yeah, that, that's how we're getting the high quality. We're syncing after the call is complete. So there's there's uh, you don't have to sync that high quality in real time. Good stuff. Good uh, stuff. And yeah. when will it be out and stuff? And still in beta um, as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so we've been beta testing for about a month. Uh, the software is pretty stable now. We probably need another month to, to make it really excellent and make it something reliable, uh, at, the, at which point we'll probably uh, launch to the public. But we are accepting more beta users. Currently, we have uh, almost 1,500 people signed up to, wow. to use it, and a few hundred of those are, are beta users, uh, and they're giving us good feedback on, on the software itself, letting us know when things go wrong and, uh, and, and giving it a shot. But um, yeah, I, I would anticipate a more public release probably by the end of end of March. Right. I, yeah, I didn't I didn't know about it until uh, Kim Flowers told me about it. So um, she showed me what it what it was and it looked fantastic. Awesome. So I signed up and yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. So, uh, shout out to Kim Flowers for telling me about it. So um yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm uh, glad that uh, glad she filled you in. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jennifer, any questions? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So how many participants can we use for PodClear? Yeah, so it's not limited. You can use an unlimited uh, number of participants. Uh, currently in this call, I believe there are seven of us or six of us. Mm-hmm. There are six of us. Um, and so PodClear is functioning just fine for, for all of these participants. You can have a large number. We would recommend keeping it you know, under 10 uh, just because it creates a lot of complexity if you add anything mm-hmm. more than that. Uh, right. but, um, but yeah, it's, it's unlimited. That's fantastic. And so when – so on each individual's – computer uh, they yeah. are uh, the the file the audio file will stay resident there at the same time be uploaded to your servers and yeah. then and then the overall yeah. organizer will receive an email with a link to or an email saying hey your files are ready and they can go and, and yep. grab them as needed yep they get yeah. they get an email they also get it in app uh, they can like download the files directly in app um, but it's kind of cool like uh, so the way that Brad sort of organized this call for us is he invited everyone to the call uh, it sent mm-hmm. them all an, e- an email uh, that we were guests on his call, and uh, the guests would just download the app, uh, which takes a couple of seconds, pop it open, they paste in the guest pin, and then we're all in a session together. So now, you know, Brad can see on his interface that we're all sort of like in this session together. When he hits record, it records, it hits record on all of our machines simultaneously. So he has remote control over sort of like this network of of computers, and then uh, when he hits finish and sync, all of our computers sync simultaneously. So he's like. Yeah, he's 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 got this sort of control system. That's great. So going forward, when when you come out of beta, will there be yeah. the um, the I guess the functionality where the organizer or the host can mute certain participants or uh, yeah, you know, if there's yeah, noise muting, on a line coming in. A- and- Muting is a feature that we're working on right now, so it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty simple to do. We just need to implement it uh, right now. Yeah. We're focusing on stabilizing the actual syncing process. We're writing an algorithm for drift uh, and and a few other uh, few other kind of cool features that we uh, that we want to implement before muting. But it's definitely on our list. This is this is so cool because I do a podcast on the side as well, and cool. I don't have a mixer, and everyone's saying 
your audio goes in and out. You need to get a mixer. To, you know? totally. And I've been hearing this forever, right? And and I'm just, yeah. you know, the so that's this is really a fantastic service. What a great solution. Are, we're, now, are cool. you a podcaster? How did you come up with this idea? Yeah, so I'm not a podcaster. Uh, I'm a programmer. I'm a software engineer by trade. And um, mm. I'm a podcast listener. So my girlfriend and I were listening to podcasts on a road trip and we were listening to this one called Dirtbag Diaries and it's it's a really cool podcast uh, about people who are just like outdoorsy people I guess and uh, he was doing interviews with like super fascinating folks and uh, the interview was almost unintelligible because they were using Skype and his call was cutting out it was really obnoxious mm-hmm. um, but um, but so so as we were sitting there I was kind of like ah oh, it seems like this would be pretty easy solve uh, easily easily solved problem with some software and uh, we brainstormed it for a bit and then uh, ended up getting a team together, uh, another software engineer uh, named Josh, uh, who's, who's also on the team. Uh, we built the software and, uh, and yeah, now it's, now it's functioning and it, and it does what we envisioned it to, to do. So it, that was, that was in okay. the end of November. So about two and a half months later, we've got, you know, 1,500 people Are you uh, kidding signed me? up to use it. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's already fast, <laughs> but uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jesus, wow. Yeah. That's that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's been That's fun. Impressive. I mean, it's 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 a clear need, right? Like yeah. podcasters need a solution Definitely. like this, so it's 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 almost easy to it's easy to get the word out because you guys share it so much. Yeah, you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure think, Jennifer I think coming you're... in for Jennifer because um, yeah, I think it'd be good for Jennifer. Oh, I'm, I'm really I'm interested it. to uh, hands down. I'm getting it. I don't care what the cost <laughs> is. Well, maybe I do, but I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, great, great. It, it will be. It will be. I'm sure it will be um, affordable and a good and a good uh, investment yeah, for absolutely. all podcasters. So. Yeah, I'd love yeah, we're to doing hear this the... for the community overall. So it's kind of like yeah. you know the the cost is this cost. Is, it's not going to be cost prohibitive. It's going to be very reasonable. Uh, we basically just want to improve the overall quality of podcasts and podcast interviews for everybody. So uh, yeah. you know, it's it it does need to be sustainable as a business, but it's not something that we're necessarily focusing on. Gotcha. Steve, any uh, oh, questions? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I kind of jumped in there a couple times. I, I'm really excited about it because uh, I was talking it uh, uh, during uh, during the show, and I looked at it, and I'm like, oh wow, this is for podcasting. And and in the pre-show, you were explaining it to us, and and it, the the idea was so simple. Yeah, it took like 20, 30 uh, seconds to explain and like my mind was blown at how simple <laughs> the idea of, of course, it's more complicated, obviously, than that yeah. going into servers and yeah. things. Um, I did have Absolutely. a question on this. Well, actually, two questions. And one is, is any kind of audio processing used on this? Um, does it go through a compressor yeah, so to keep all the levels the same and... and so, so we have a we have a few algorithms on the uh, on the back end. Uh, I won't go into too much detail on it, uh, just because it gets a little bit monotonous. But we are running some processing on the audio. Where we have an algorithm that syncs the beginning of the track, so that if there's any delay between the time that you know Brad hits the sync button and when it, that message gets to our computers, uh, our system compensates for that and adds extra bits to the beginning of the wave file so that it syncs up nicely. And then uh, the audio file itself is lightly processed. In beta, we've turned off the processing, but in the long run, uh, we are going to have a light light compression, some normalization so that the audio files are even, uh, some equalization, uh, and uh, and that's about it. Yeah, just sort of oh, also a limiter so that uh, you don't have to worry about background noise and all that good stuff. In, oh, the, in nice. this early beta version, none of that stuff is activated though. Um, okay, one more question. Um, now you said on each computer, it the, the audio from that computer's microphone is recorded onto the hard drive. Yeah. Now, once yeah. that syncs with the computer, is that automatically erased or? It is. It oh, is. Okay. Yeah. So once it's once it's synced and then it's confirmed that it is in fact out on our servers, like safe, uh, it checks it checks that and then it comes back and, and erases the files from your hard drive so it doesn't take up the space. So how about on the the client computer? Let, let's say once we quit the Skype call, do we still have to leave it synced until it, it gives a, us a cleared message or? Yep. Yep. So so we'll walk through that process when this calls over. Oh, but okay. Basically. Uh, he'll, he'll, uh, it, it'll be good to get this on air, but he, he basically hits finish and sync on his side. Once the Skype call is complete, we all sit, uh, we can get off the Skype call if we wanted to, but, um, you leave pod clear open for about five minutes, depending on the length of the call. This call is about an hour. So it, it'll take about five minutes to sync, maybe a little bit less depending on your network speed. Mm-hmm. And then, um, 
yeah, that'll sync up to the cloud and then you can close pod clear. It'll erase the file and, and be just fine. So there is a little bit of, uh, that's how we get the quality. There's a little bit of, of wait time there while it uploads the, the large, the large wave file. Good stuff, Spencer. I can't wait. Have we got, have we can we announce any prices yet, or how much do you have a rough sort of price on how much it'll cost? Or yeah, uh, we 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 are discussing sort of a tiered system. So there are some podcasters who podcast every day, some podcasters who podcast once a week. Uh, so we'll be accommodating all of them. We also so we're thinking, you know, a low a low tier maybe in the five to ten dollar range, uh, yep. a medium tier in the ten to fifteen, and then an upper tier in the. the the 15 to 20. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a few tiers like that, which, uh, that will be a monthly recurring subscription where you'll get a number of sessions per month. So the lower tier might get like four sessions a month for the weekly podcaster and then, you know, up and up. Uh, and then we'll also offer packages for networks. So five, uh, you know, five by five or some of these larger networks might need to purchase a subscription for all of their podcasters well maybe they'll have a master account and yep. they'll be able to give all of their podcasters in the network uh, a sub account uh, with a number of sessions so that the whole entire network's audio quality uh, raises up a level basically oh, so oh. Uh, yeah we want to we want to sort of offer packages like that where it's like a really affordable to get it for these networks and uh, and everyone gets to try out podclear so Has any, have you been interviewed by anyone else besides us or yeah, we've been on a few pretty cool podcasts um, so far, and we have uh, some partnerships, some pretty cool partnerships in the work right now. So uh, we're uh, we're moving along. I mean, people are people are excited about it. We've got some good buzz on Twitter, and and uh, it, it definitely seems like something that the podcasting community needs. And, it, yeah. and we're excited. Uh, we've got you, you must have spoken with Hannah. Yeah, Hannah is Hannah's our co-founder as well, and uh, she's she's engaging the community directly. So it's been really fun. Yeah, she's for cool. her to be able to like interact with everybody and, yeah. and be hyper engaged with folks on Twitter. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, she's cool. She's she, she helped me out the first time when I went on the Skype and stuff. And uh, totally. Yeah, it worked, worked fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All Good right. Uh, let's go to Jody. Any questions, Jody? Jody, just um, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I had it on mute. Um, not that it matters because with um, <laughs> one, one system, I'm I'm not muted. The other one, I, yeah, I am because I have the dogs cool. in the background. Um, question though, like, you're are you currently monetizing it, or you're going to wait to monetize it? And how did you get the 1,500 people? Uh, so we're waiting to monetize it. Uh, we're going to monetize probably, uh, like I said, maybe in like the next month or two. Or we want to wait until the, the product is completely stable and very, very reliable. You'll never lose any files or anything like that. Um, so once that's the case and we and we are absolutely certain of it, then we will probably turn on payments. We'll still offer like free trials and all that good stuff and try and get people to at least try it out, uh, but um, but we will we need to make it a sustainable business. There's there are server costs involved and all of that stuff, um, and then the 1,500 people we launched on a few different services. We did a, a beta list launch. We also did a product hunt launch, and then uh, we just reached out to folks on Twitter and basically uh, followed them or. Uh, you know, Hannah, Hannah either followed them or responded to some of their comments on Twitter and just, just engaged with the community. Generally, people, the nice thing about podcasters is everyone has sort of a podium through which they speak to the world. So if, uh, if they hear about something cool, they share it on their podcast and then, you know, 10 more podcasters hear that thing and then those 10 podcasters go pick it up and then share it. So it's got this cool network effect. We're, we're bringing in like 15 to 20 new signups per day without really doing any marketing whatsoever. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's been a lot of fun. All right, Linda. Any questions? Um, yeah, I was just going to ask who inspired you to make the app. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. So, I, I, like I said, I'm I'm a software engineer, so I'm always kind of looking for interesting ideas and cool problems to solve with the with uh, with code. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, it was more, it was less of a personal need and more of like, I guess it was a personal need, but a personal listening need more than like a personal, I'm a podcaster and, and I want to, you know, make clear audio. Uh, so the inspiration came from, uh, low quality audio interviews in the podcast that I love listening to. Have you listened to tech yeah. webcast before? I haven't. This is my, this is my first time listening and I like it. It's okay, really cool. cool. Actually, yeah, and where do you see, where do you see the future going for PodClear? Uh, so the future of PodClear, we're going to build out a, a well. It's it's sort of a tough question to to answer. Uh, we we've got a lot of ideas, obviously, you know, and and they keep flowing in. All of our beta users are like, oh, you gotta you gotta make an editing system. You gotta make me tagging, and then and then you know, I want to 
integrate this with with my uh, Stitcher account and, and my Libsyn and it, it should do everything. And, and all of those things are really, really cool and they're all really exciting engineering problems to solve. And uh, and I would love to go down that road and, and, and do them, but we have to be a little bit selective so that we make sure that every product that we do make is of the highest possible quality. Uh, so we want to really focus. I, we think that desktop is the right place to be for now. Uh, we the next thing we're going to do is probably a mobile solution so that people can do uh, like call-ins and remote interviews and stuff. Uh, and then uh, and then you know we might move into some sort of a like a rudimentary editing system for you to like take the waveform and edit out uh, awkward silences and and uh, whatever. And then a tagging system and all that. Like oh, those are all ideas that uh, that are exciting. So we'll see. Actually, uh, real quick, ahead, yeah, I, I've got a really uh, interesting question from the chat room, and he brought up video. I know it doesn't record video, but that would actually kind of be it, a very interesting part if you could also, f uh, if you incorporate Skype video into a video podcast uh, to do something totally. similar for the future. So give me your thoughts on that. Totally. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely something we want to do. So lossless video from the webcam or whatever default webcam the the interviewer guest has that would be phenomenal so it, skype skype hyper compresses the video as well uh which is a problem right it's a it's a it, it looks terrible if you want to put that on youtube or whatever and same with google hangouts and all of that good stuff so if we could get independent videos from each person uh and uh, and have them be uncompressed and also display them in a in a in a logical way like sort of google hangout style where the the person who's speaking at a specific time they're videos on screen like we would have to rewrite a lot of that logic but um but it would be amazing it'd be awesome yeah it would yeah yep all right any yeah. more questions from anyone else or is that it that's about it i think um spencer where can they get hold of you if they want to ask you any more questions mate or they, they want to sign up yeah uh you can drop us an email uh you can email hannah at hannah at podclear.com uh you can hit us up on twitter we're podclear tweets yep uh, and then you can find us on our website at podclear.com. Uh, and uh, there's a beta sign up there. And if you reach out to us personally and you really want to, you know, provide some good feedback and try out the beta product, uh, just shoot us an email and we'll get you on a, an early release yeah, uh, definitely. That, that we're not giving to everybody. So we need to get yeah. Jennifer on there. Spend some? Absolutely. Can do. And We'd love to. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> good, good to have, get on there. And uh, yeah, any more comments? Jacob, any questions? Sorry, I didn't for Darjee, mate. Any questions? No, you probably. You got them already. I'll be using this tomorrow cool. on the other podcast too, Spencer. So, um, yeah, this is going to come in handy. Uh, I'm really cool. Awesome. I'm really interested to see what it sounds like once you finish it. I'm going to actually jump on and, and listen to the final output once you upload it. Yeah, definitely. It. And when you hear it, Steve, you'll be unbelievable. Right? You'll be shocked by it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you'll be shocked. Trust me. It's, it's Probably. very clear and it's, and it's very, very good, good quality. Sounds cool. like it. Awesome. Mm. Uh, Belinda, any more comments? Um, it just sounds fantastic. It's the best idea I've heard for a while. So, Cool. Yeah, I love that. Podcast. Awesome. Great yeah. feedback. Good yeah. feedback, Linda. Yep. Okay, Linda, where can they get hold of you on Twitter and stuff? Yeah. Um, you can get hold of me at bdemi. That's on Twitter. Cool. Right. And, yeah. Cool. All right, good stuff. Spencer, what about you? Are you on a personal Twitter or are you just going to use the... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Spencer414 on Twitter. So, at Spencer414, uh, that's a good place to reach out to me. All right, good stuff, mate. Jacob Jones, what about you, mate? Uh, you can follow me at jazzbot three two six six nine one z. All right, and you can on Twitter at Brad Oz and at Tech Webcast. Uh, J uh, Jennifer, what about you? People can find me at jenniferruggiero.com or getnerdywitha.com, as well as on Twitter, it's uh, at jruggiero. Good stuff. And by the way, is Google Plus? What's going on with Google Plus in the future? Is that closing down, or what happened? What's going on with that? I ever heard of it closing down. I certainly hope not. I, I, have, I, have thought, I love it. I thought um, there's some new changes coming. Steve mentioned something about it, didn't you, Steve? Um, yeah, actually, somebody in the chat room mentioned it, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but it, it could be anything. Something, some new changes, something coming to it, or something, some new changes, or something. Hmm. I read something. I can't uh -huh. see it going away. Yeah, not I can't anytime see soon. It going away. I don't know, but yeah, yeah I just found it interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, people say it's a ghost town, but to me, it's not a ghost town. I mean, it's it's still pretty active and lively. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. still do hangouts or? Uh, you know, I don't really do that many hangouts, but I I've, I've been watching Chris Voss's hangouts um, <laughs> lately, though. Yeah. He's been doing those daily tech shows, which yeah. have been fun to watch. Yeah. yeah, definitely. When's your show coming back? By the way, too, Blint. Uh, uh, next week, actually. Next week. Uh, next week. Who's the guest going to yeah. be on? Uh, 
I'm lining that up <laughs> right now. We, we're trying to go in the direction actually of startups and to interview startups. Okay, cool. Bring them well, if we need any startups, let me know. I can, might, might better uh, give some people to you. Oh, that'd be awesome. I just, yeah. Um, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was getting, I, I've got some people on, on Facebook that may, may be interested. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear about them. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's go to Jody. What about you, Jody? Well, um, regarding Google Plus, um, there have been some rumors about it that um, basically Google might be separating the parts of Google Plus, yeah. like, like photos and messaging and Hangouts, and taking them away from the social stream. So it's yet to be seen what's going to happen, but um, that's kind of what the conjecture is. So I don't know if that helps. But um, you can find me on Twitter as Sunswept or find me um, at my website, which is webmarcom.net. I'm also doing um, Social Media Addicts with um, Seth Goldstein, and uh, you can find us there. It's SMA. Cool. And, uh, and here. Uh, I right? mentioned, you mentioned your new podcast too, Jada. Give us a quick rundown on what, it, what it, what's it about. Uh, well, we're doing Social Media Addicts. It's actually um, Seth and I are co-hosts. And then we have Howard Yermish, who has also been uh, filling in as a co-host. And um, basically, it's all the news that's fit to print and then some about social media. A um, lot of discussion. We don't always agree. And I think that makes for a lively podcast. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's a weekly podcast. Where, where can people listen to it? Uh, it's available on iTunes and also SMA, uh, Social Media um, Addicts. Or um, it's part of the Philly Tech um, uh, network. Okay. So you can find us on phillytech.org or um, at Social Media Addicts. Good stuff, Jody. We will listen. Yeah, we're, we're definitely addicted. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool, Jody. I didn't even know you were doing that. I, that's yeah, how I out of the either. loop I've been lately. Yeah, so, yeah. No, she was doing that. Yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Sometimes I forget I'm doing it too. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, Seth and I had been doing, um, Actually, Seth was one of the originators of, um, uh, which we called um, A2SM, Addicted to Social Media. And it was Seth and I and uh, Neil and Neil Weiser. And uh, that that's one of those things that I keep struggling to get started again. But Seth started this whole um, Philly network, and there's several podcasts. There's an Android-based uh, podcast. Um, supposed to be doing gadget dogs, which still has to get off the ground. But um, there's um, he's he's doing some kind of like an interview of CEOs, um, entrepreneurs, and startups within the Philly uh, metro area. So a lot of new new stuff, a lot of new um, content. So cool. It's it's pretty cool. Sounds good, Jody. Uh, Jake, you want to mention your little uh, podcast as well, and you where where can get hold of you? Uh, you already asked me. Oh, did I mention your podcast, mate? I don't. What podcast? Blaine, do you want to mention it? Oh, the Xbox Get podcast. Tech, tech Luster. God, Jake. <laughs> tech Luster is on tomorrow, Sunday, Australian time. Yeah. What yeah. time are we on? I don't know. Same, what time. same time, 12 yeah, o'clock? Same time, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, depends on <laughs> what podcast. Yeah, Jeez, Lovely make time. <laughs> Um Yeah, good stuff, Linda. Well, good to have you on tomorrow and chat about Yeah, that would be awesome. Check about Xbox stuff and uh, yeah. Uh, Steve, what about you, mate? Oh, you can find me uh, on Twitter as Cheddarbox underscore live. All right. And that is a wrap till next week. Thanks, Spence, for coming on, mate. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was great to be here. And uh, yep, yeah, here's the outro. Tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Tech webcast Cause technology it moves so fast Tech webcast ha, Stick around and you're gonna have a blast Yeah Tech 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 webcast ha, ha. Tech 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 webcast Big ups to Andrew to Brad, Jody, Steve, and Jennifer!